We only have early evidence on how to actually flush out microplastics out of the body. This is a newer thing in the grand scheme of things. So when we look at how we actually eliminate them, we have to look at early research, but there's promising stuff. So I've got the most promising way to eliminate microplastics out of the body. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. I do ask that you leave a comment down below for the algorithm. It really helps these videos out. YouTube is just kind of funny like that. They want engagement and that isn't how my content was originally created. It was just information, but leave a comment. It helps us out a ton. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. So I'm not gonna talk about what the problem is with microplastics because that's pretty obvious. I don't need to waste your time with that. I'm just gonna get right down to the granular of it. So there's a couple studies that take a look at how microplastics move through the body, and that's gonna help us. And then we're gonna look at the key way that we can reduce absorption and improve the movement of it out of the body. I also popped a link down below for today's video sponsor, which is Timeline Nutrition. If you're focused on mitochondrial health, if you're focused on longevity, this is probably one of the most vetted supplements within that category. It is called Urolithin A. So it's Timeline Nutrition. And this patented form of Urolithin A called MitoPure is something that induces something called mitophagy. So it's autophagy within the mitochondria, which means it helps the mitochondria sort of recalibrate and almost break down unused components of it and consolidates the good components. So you're left with good quality mitochondria, which produces energy within the body. So from an energy standpoint and overall mitochondrial health standpoint, it's probably one of the most promising things that's out there right now. They've been a sponsor on this channel for a while because I really support what they're doing and the research that's come out with them. They've got published in JAMA and all kinds of major peer reviewed journals. So that link down below is for 10% off Timeline Nutrition any of their products. So I recommend just taking their berry powder form. I mix it in yogurt, all kinds of stuff makes it easy. So that link is down below in the top line of the description. So if I told you straight up that the best way to eliminate microplastics is through the gut, you could turn off the video because you know it's through the gut, but what are you gonna really do? Like, how are you gonna learn how to do this? We have to learn how to utilize the gut properly. So there's a study published in the journal Total Environment, which was fascinating because they found that Every single subject in this study, when they tested their stool, they had varying levels of microplastics come out through their stool. And what we learned from other research, for example, a study that was published in the International Journal of Pharmaceuticals, microplastics are absorbed like regular food. And the smaller the particle, the easier it is to absorb. So through the intestinal tract, they absorb and then they go into our bloodstream and they go into all tissues and organs, okay? But what we're seeing is when it comes out in the stool, that tells us that, well, these things move through the stool and we can excrete them through the stool. This is extremely promising because it means the more that we can protect ourselves from the micro and nanoplastics, the better. So microplastics are not as small as some of the food particles that are absorbed. Now, not all of our food particles absorb, that's why we have poop. Right? So what we need to do is we need to A, make sure our gut barrier is very tight. The tight junctions within our gut are the way they should be. We've all heard the saying leaky gut and it's over-marketed and over-hyped and people don't take it serious, but it's one of the most important things we can focus on. So what we wanna do is we wanna consume things like collagen. We wanna consume things like bone broth. We wanna consume three to five grams of glutamine probably every other day. And I know that people have concerns with it, but glutamine is important for gut barrier integrity, okay? And it's gonna help keep those junctions tight, okay? Now, what that means is that less, not all, but less microplastic and nanoplastic particles can get through, and you're gonna see potentially more end up in the stool. Does not stop the fact that all this stuff is still airborne, it's coming in through our skin, like it's absorbing into organs, but one of the only ways that we can potentially look at the literature and say, this is the best way we can potentially flush this or at least eliminate it, it has to do with our gut. Now, there is another thing that we can look at with the gut barrier integrity. First, we can also eliminate emulsifiers as much as possible. So namely polysorbates, which I know I talk about till I'm blue in the face, but if you see polysorbate on a label, just avoid it. It seems simple and it seems like Okay, well, it's not a big deal, it's polysorbate. But when you think about the downstream effects of damaging your gut and breaking down that gut mucosal layer, that is, my friends, literally how inflammation can start in the body. Like when your gut is inflamed, it triggers all kinds of other issues too, right? You have inflammatory responses, then you have an immune response, you have chronic inflammation that's coming from immune responses independent of all the other health factors. It is a completely avoidable 
or I shouldn't say completely, but probably one of the more avoidable forms of chronic inflammation, right, is just by taking care of our gut. So avoid those emulsifiers just whenever you can. And polysorbate, I'm just gonna get on a limb and say, it should probably never come in your body, seeing how we use it in research settings to literally induce inflammation and lipopolysaccharides. Also, you can reduce stress. You might wanna consider adding in some colostrum. There's early evidence there. It's questionable whether it's gonna really help you with the gut lining or not. But then we get to the big stuff, okay? We get to something called bile acid sequestration, okay? Bile acid sequestration is where bile acids actually sequester some of the fat soluble things and even toxins in our gut and help move them out. So what you do is you use things like soluble fiber, chia seeds, flax seeds, anything with good amounts of soluble fiber. And it increases because bile acid is actually gonna to bind to soluble fiber and it's gonna help the flow of it. And then the bile acids are gonna potentially bind to the nanoplastics, the microplastics, and move it through the stool better along with proper hydration, which is going to allow for the filtration, right? So with this, the main thing you can focus on with the gut is the gut barrier integrity and the transit time, and of course, the actual sequestration. So how do we improve transit time? Drink more water. How do we improve the gut barrier integrity? Glutamine, collagen, bone broth, avoiding polysorbates, reduce stress, don't over-exercise. Like these are real things. Okay, and then the soluble fiber improves that bile acid sequestration. So it comes full circle back to gut health, right? What are other things that we can do? Because again, if microplastics are absorbed through the gut, the healthier the gut, the better our chance. I am not making a bold claim and saying you're not gonna have microplastics. Okay, we're seeing them in the brain, we're seeing them in the heart, we're seeing them in the testes, the lungs, everywhere, all tissues, okay? But the more that we can decrease the absorption, well, as we go through life and these things are forever and building up in our body, we're gonna have less of them. I guess I don't have full evidence that we could actually get the microplastics out of the arterial plaque, that we can get it out of these tissues completely, especially. But we can reduce how much we absorb and we can flush it a little bit better. So hydration comes into play there for sure. We definitely wanna focus on that. But what are other things that we can do for our gut? polyphenols, believe it or not. So people always focus on just like roughage and fiber. That can actually be, well, it's fine, but it could potentially be problematic for some people with IBS or gut issues. Polyphenols, we're getting from fruit, we're getting from fruit extracts, even extracts in, in concentrated juices. Polyphenols are both prebiotic and oftentimes postbiotic, which means they encourage the good microbiome, right? They encourage the microbiota to be tilted the way that we want it. But they're also one of the most powerful things for overall anti-inflammatory effects within the gut. So a little bit of fruit or a little bit of fruit extract, you can look into different polyphenols. Polyphenol-rich foods have these anti-inflammatory effects, but they also induce the endogenous anti-inflammatory effects within our body. So superoxide dismutase, glutathione peroxidase, which may even help us with the negative effects that have come from the microplastics in the first place from an inflammatory perspective. So you don't need to go eat a giant salad and get a bunch of fiber. You need the nutrient quality and the postbiotics, even like I mentioned with timeline nutrition, that's an example, for example, of a postbiotic. So not even trying to circle back to a plug for them, I'm just giving an example. A postbiotic that can come from some of these polyphenols is something that after it gets acted upon by the microbiome, it turns into something different that has a different mechanism within the body. So we're finding that it's less about the total amount of fiber and more about the quality of these polyphenols and these different antioxidant compounds. So it kind of comes full circle back to, well, okay, eat wholesome, bright colored, good foods while also keeping track of things that are good for your gut. It's the best chance that we have at eliminating these things because we're not gonna change the environment so rapidly that we're not having microplastics everywhere. Of course, there's the things like drink out of glass and the obvious stuff like reducing the consumption of it, but it's gonna be everywhere. So as always, keep it locked to here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.